jam-packed highways are a familiar sight in Germany. Car Testamatus Curat knows when we see a traffic jam coming up, most of us think, damn, now it's going to take longer. I just want to go home. I really can't use a traffic jam now. But this driver has actually sought this one out. Matis is the passenger for once. The driver is Peter Bergmiller, head of Audi's piloted driving project. Matis noticed that Peter actually seemed to be looking forward to the traffic jam. Peter points out a great function this A8 has that helps take some of the stress out of traffic jams. Peter explains that the traffic jam assist lets the driver leave the driving to the car, so the car, not the driver, takes over the driving. Matis thinks that sounds practical and wonders how it works. Peter explains the car recognizes that it can handle the driving conditions. He presses this button on the center console to switch the system on. Matis observes that now both passenger and driver can concentrate on other matters. Peter confirms this. For example, they could watch TV here on the center console. At present, these systems are not street legal in any country, but the developers are hoping that will change. Much as with an airplane's autopilot, their piloted systems come with double and triple safety systems. Peter explains that Audi developed sensors for the A8 based on three principles. One is a laser scanner that reveals what's happening all around as well as the detailed contours of the cars nearby. Another is radar sensors that look ahead and to the sides. And there's a camera that also keeps watch on the area ahead. The traffic jam assistant functions through the interaction of all these sensors. Matas wonders what happens if one of the sensors fails. Peter says if that happens, the system requests that the driver take over. Of great importance is that no matter what the failure, the system ensures that the car proceeds safely in its own lane until the driver takes over. In the worst case, it stops without causing a collision. Apparently, the worst that can happen is that the car itself might cause a traffic jam. But in heavy traffic, more is involved in driving than just accelerating and braking. Montes points out that now they're stuck in slow-moving traffic. An accident may have occurred somewhere ahead, so he'll have to make sure the ambulances have room to get through between the cars. Will the system do that too? Peter confirms it will. The car recognizes its lane and automatically moves out of the emergency corridor. For example, their car is in the left lane, so it pulls to the left edge in case the emergency vehicles need to pass on the right. Montes describes Audi's traffic jam assistant as very convenient and easy to operate, just as he'd imagined using an autopilot ought to be. But he still hopes the traffic jam will break up soon. He has to get to the airship hangar in Mülheim. Could Peter take him there? Peter obliges, no problem. Once inside a car, people generally see only what's happening close by. To get the bigger picture regarding a traffic jam, you have to take to the air. Here, the advantage of an airship is that it doesn't fly very fast. In the airship with Matis is Professor Michael Schreckenberg, a physicist who researches traffic jams. He's at a university in one of the most congested regions of Germany, the essen duisburg area. The Ruhr Valley has lots of traffic anyway. He asked Professor Schreckenberg how a traffic jam like the one below comes about. He doesn't see any accidents. Professor Schreckenberg explains that 60 to 70 percent of all traffic jams are caused purely by congestion, which means too many vehicles using the same road in the same direction at the same time. Roads have a limited capacity. Matas asks if the traffic jam assistant Audi's developed for the new A8 will prevent traffic jams, or will it simply help the driver who's already stuck in one? Professor Schreckenberg thinks the traffic jam assistant will help to harmonize traffic. He believes technology is better able than people to adapt to conditions in heavy traffic. So it will hit the brakes and hit the gas as little as possible. It goes with the flow and it has far better reaction times. That makes the ride more relaxing for the driver and it's better for the other cars. 
The more vehicles are equipped like that, the less often these waves of traffic jams will occur. Back down to earth and the present. If worse comes to worst, can we really entrust our lives to control systems and sensors? Let's put it to the test. Matas is in the driver's seat. Another car is straight ahead. What should he do? Peter suggests that he turn on the adaptive cruise control. They'll start off behind another car. Then he can switch on the traffic jam assist. At around 55 kilometers per hour, the system messages the driver to take control. Peter tells Matas to do nothing and see what happens. Matas starts off, switches on the traffic jam assistant, and does nothing more. Peter confirms that the system is asking the driver to take control. Now, Matas wonders if he shouldn't do something. He doesn't want to rear-end the car ahead, but then it's not slowing down. He can feel the braking in his seatbelt. And now they've come safely to a stop. Montes is impressed that the technology is so advanced. All we need now is for the authorities to legalize it for use on public roads. It's been ready for some time now.